It's a 2024 home opener for the Darien Blue Wave Boys Lacrosse campaign. And here live in the Darien High School Stadium Field, the Boys in Blue take on the Jesuits of Fairfield Prep. Hi, everyone. He's Thomas Ponte. I'm Liam Tomaszewski. Bring you live coverage here from DHS Stadium Field. And Thomas, it's a home opener, a nice, breezy, cool day in March. How do you think we're going to see here today? Yeah, I couldn't have picked a better game to open up the season. Darien versus Fairfield Prep, obviously a rivalry that's had some really nice recent history lately. So any CC, any preseason rust, we need, we need to be uh, we need to be uh, shaken off as they try to start off their season with a win. Of course, both these teams a nice spring day, Saturday, one o'clock home opener for the boys in blue. But let's get into our pregame show, looking at the highlights from last year's matchup. Thomas, both these teams met last year in a rainy night matchup. It was close the entire time, but Darien ultimately came away with a huge win. Yeah, and last year's matchup, Darien showed a lot of fight as they overcame Fairfield Prep's early lead, getting better over the course of the game as they figured out exactly how to execute their offense and shift through the Jesuits' strong defensive effort. But the Jesuits never went away at any point during the game, keeping it close until the end. Ultimately, they had trouble finishing their shots against goalkeeper Carter Hagen, with Darian managing to pull off the win and a late game-winning shot from Elliott Lancaster. Of course, that game last year over at Rafferty Stadium, campus of Fairfield University. But now let's take a look at our USA Lacrosse national rankings. Obviously, neither of these teams have played a game yet. These are just preseason rankings, but Darian saying at the number 10 spot, just in front of FCAC Powerhouse of Staples. Fairfield Prep currently at the number 23 spot. And you look at all these teams in the top 25. Both these teams have rather hard schedules. Darian, of course, playing teams around the uh, northeast area, of course, the Long Island teams as well. But again, right away, we're starting off with a ranked game right off the bat. Yeah, with Darien opening up with Fairfield Prep in Brunswick and Fairfield opening up with Darien themselves, both these teams will have an important start to the season where they're going to have to show just how good of a team they are from the outset. Of course, getting into the key players for both these teams, Darien obviously led on the big attack side of five-star recruits Ray Ricorni and then, of course, three-star recruit Porter Barnett. Darien has lots of depth on the offense and defense. This Darien team is definitely going to be threat this season. And, of course, you have Carter Hagen doing the net as well. Yeah, there's a ton of depth, depth and talent on this Darien team with 31 out of their 42 players being returning varsity players. As you mentioned, Brady Bricorni, one of the stars of the show for Darien last season, proved that he can finish any scoring opportunity that you give him. And Porter Barnett is another shifty attacker who can dodge defenders and create many scoring opportunities for this Darien side. With the help of these two, Darien will be a serious offensive threat throughout the year. And of course, looking at the other side, the Jesuit side, they have their fair share of depth as well. Of course, uh, Tim Shanahan leading the attack line. He's a Boston University Terriers commit. He had four goals in a scrimmage against Glastonbury just a week ago. So Tim is definitely getting the Jesuit set high for an offensive season. Yeah, Fairfield Prep will execute well on both sides of the ball with 23 uh, returning varsity players of their own this season across all different positions for them. With the proven goal scorer of Tim Shanahan leading on the offensive front and a defense that should only improve on last year's strong squad. With the, with the increase in experience, this Jesuit squad will be hard for any team to stop. Of course, now Thomas Darien finished their last season short of the Class L Championship. Darien fell to Staples. Fairfield Prep have made it to the title game, but then lost Staples. So both these teams are looking to start their season off strong from losing in the state tournament a year ago. Yeah, with both these teams' previous seasons falling just short of their ultimate goal, they'll be keen to get right back into it today and kick off another title run with a strong opening game. Of course, now again for both these teams, let's look at the coaches' side of things. Darren with legendary head coach Jeff Braymeyer in his 41st season. He's been at the helm of Blue Wave across since the beginning of the program. The Jesuits with Graham Niemi entering his eighth season as head coach. Both these bring experience to a big game like this, and of course, we'll see what happens come game time. Yeah, definitely no lack of experience or expertise for leadership on either side today. I know both these great coaches have already paired, prepared their respective sides for today's big game, and they know what it takes to stay composed and execute a win, even in the biggest of games like today. And Thomas, to cap off our Boys Lacks pregame show, where are the keys of the game for the visiting Fairfield Prep Jesuits looking to start the season off with a big win? For Fairfield Prep, my first key to the game is to win the possession game. Uh, this Darien team has so many offensive capabilities from their attackmen to their midfielders, so winning the faceoffs and keeping the ball out of Darien's sticks will be key. Next, it is to use their pace to create transition plays that can give them number, the numbers advantage down the field to score, and lastly, the Jesuits have to finish off their opportunities in offense. This, this Darien defense led by goalkeeper Carter Hagen is tough to get past, so taking advantage of any looks they can get will be critical in walking off this field with a win today. And of course now, Darien home team, the Blue Wave, they're bringing a lot of returning faces back to the big stage of this varsity squad. where are the keys of the game for the Blue Wave? For Darien, they're going to need to control the pace of the game, and there's no need for them to rush. They have such great uh, an offensive ability to score that they, that they just need to focus on setting up their offense correctly and running until they get the perfect opportunity to finish the play. Secondly, 
They need to be the tougher team out on the field. As for sides, both these teams are evenly matched. So if Darian can come out with a more physical, with more physicality and grit, they definitely should have no problem forcing turnovers and fighting through contact. Finally, Darian needs to make sure that the penalties are kept to a minimum. They have to stay composed for all 48 minutes and not let any unenforced errors be the reason for turnovers or giving prep uh, any other more advantages than they already have. Darian has every ability to win this game, but they're going to have to make sure that they don't help prep by beating themselves up today. Of course, it's the number 10 boys in blue versus number 23 Fairfield Prep Jesuits coming up on the DAF Media Network after these short breaks. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network, and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at dafmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. The rendition of the national anthem here from Darien High School Stadium Field. And obviously, Thomas, we touched on a little bit in the beginning of Darien key players for this match. Of course, uh, Brady Picorni will be out with an injury for today. So we talked about senior captain Porter Barnett. He's definitely going to be anchoring that attack line a lot much more today. Yeah, Porter Barnett's going to have to step up today as the experienced attacker on this front line. 
and the other attackers as well are going to have to be – it's got to be a next man up mentality for us. Brady McCorney, star of the show last year. Uh, so obviously him being out is a huge blow for this Darien team, but one th one that they can deal with with all their depth. Yeah, but Corny's absence definitely going to be hurting the Darien side, but nonetheless they have star attackers all the way. They have a lot of depth. They have sophomores in the starting lineup today along with seniors and juniors as well. So they're going to be definitely going on strong on the offensive side, but this Fairfield prep team, they want to take Darien at home, try to get an early season W for their score sheet. Just about get ready for the faceoff here at the faceoff vex of the stadium field. Fairfield Prep taking the faceoff. Number 13, Ryan Backus. And for the wave out in the center for Fogo spot for today's contest. Again, both these teams getting set and underway here for this Saturday afternoon matchup. Faceoff scrum over there. Backus looking, trying to get it. But that one with along with number 13, Gavin Pearsall, that one's going to be won by the Jesuits early on. Yeah, back as last year, had a great conversion rate on faceoffs. Darian faceoffs is somewhere as a part of the, their play where they struggled last year. So it'll be interesting to see the readjustments they make coming into this year. So the Jesuits win the first faceoff of the contest. And just the start of the first quarter play, fourth quarter, uh, four quarters played in high school boys lacrosse. And once again, the Jesuits will get started on their attack side. Moving this one along over to the front sides, back behind the net. Shanahan with it, moving this one along. Back out near the 40-yard line. There in defense still holding on strong. Of course, number one, Carter Hagen anchoring the pipes for the blue wave. Back out. Prep gets a shot on it. That one will just miss the net. Big shot there from number 23, Emmett Crotty. Yeah, as you mentioned, Carter Hagen in last year's matchup, he had 14 saves. He really kept Darien in the game all throughout, and, and of course throughout the season had some big saves as well that uh, helped Darien in some really big moments. Yeah, of course, Carter Hagen had career-high saves in that game against Fairfield Prep last year over at Rafferty Stadium at Fairfield University. So possession staying with the Jesuits. Still trying to move this ball along over in their attack zone. Still moving along. Rudolph over near behind the net. Trying to get a shot on it, stopped up by the Darien D. Darien doing a nice job just keeping them out of the middle of, of the zone. Still trying to move it along, the Jesuits out in front. Still moving this, Darien doing a nice job holding them from getting any, any shots onto the net. Still about got moving this one along, gets a shot and that one will go in. First shot for the Jesuits, none other than Tim Shanahan. Yeah, Tim Shanahan, we, he was our player to watch coming in here, and he's already showing his strengths and how he can finish goals here today, and that was just a great dodge towards the goal and just great finish on the shot there from Tim Shanahan. So Shanahan, of course, the Boston University Terriers commit, puts one up early on the boys in blue as the Jesuits lead 1-0. Another face-off over at the face-off X. Fairfield Prep's going to take another one at that one. 2-0 on face-off so far. Yeah, and that's, like, that's going to be a key to this game, just who's going to control the possession, who's going to keep the offensive plays going their way, and who's going to create the most chances for themselves. And right now that's going to be Fairfield Prep, and it's giving them a one nothing lead and the ball to do something more with it. Yeah, one nothing lead early on. Only two minutes so far have passed by in this game. Fairfield Prep will get set over in their offensive zone. Move this along, Darian D, the lawn stick of William Bonner trying to break that one up. 
Again, back out over the Jesuits. Still trying to move it after Tim Shanahan's goal. Fairfield still moving this one along, back out over. Yeah, just trying to swing it around, find the cutter, find the, the space inside, trying to disorient that Darian defense. We're staying pretty condensed, pretty compact in the middle of the zone there. Yeah, Darian defense still trying to hold on, back out over near the net. Rep looking for a shot with Shanahan on the ground. That one will just miss, but possession staying with the Jesuit side. Looks like oh, almost a broken, like stick broken stick out. Yeah. Broken stick over by the 25-yard line. Darian down a man as they prep with the field. shot just misses the net of Carter Hagen. There was a shot there from number 91, Luke Shanahan. You can hear the wind here from Darian High School Stadium Field, a windy Saturday afternoon matchup. Of course, Fairfield prep in there away. Red jerseys, Darian sporting their home whites. Possession once again over to the Jesuits. So moving this one on over to the left side of Carter Hagen's net. Darien looking for their first offensive possession of the day. They've only been on defense primarily so far. Still trying to break this one up is Darien. Trying to get a look for the loose possessions. Bonner, but that one's going to stay with the Jesuits. And they'll reset here. Moving this one along over to Shanahan. Back out near the 40-yard line as they'll look to reset. Yeah, that was a nice check there from from Darianne, but it's just unable to get on the loose ball and Fairfield's gonna keep the possession. So still moving this one along. Back out over the Jesuits. Looking for an open shot opportunity. And about four minutes have passed, Darian still looking for that first offensive spot. Primarily on the defensive side throughout this first quarter. Yeah, prep just content to take a slow here as it might be another turnover here. Tom looking for it. Or excuse me, that one's just gonna stay on the Jesuit side. Yeah, but Prep just content to take it slow here. Just work their offense and see if the right opportunity opens up and they can put another one behind the net. So possession staying once again with the Jesuits. Still trying to look for it over on the open body side. Their offense production did really well last year. Only lost I think three games on the season, one of which was to the Blue Wave. Start off the season last year over at Rafferty. But they made it all the way to the Class L Championship where they fell to Staples in a close margin game. They're looking to try to get back there for a consecutive year. Back over the front, shot from Shanahan. That one just misses the net of Hagen. But Fairfield Prep doing a nice job with the scrum and regain that possession. Again, slow movement from the Jesuits. And of course, no shot clock here in Darien High School lacrosse, so they have all the time that they need to just set up their offense and take a shot. So again, the Jesuits looking for a shot open on net. Darian defense still holding on strong over behind the net. Once again, still looking for it over in the back shot there. That one's just going to go wide. There was a shot there from number 23, Emmett Crody. So Crody shot back out over. Got a little nice lane at it, but that one will just miss. Ned of Hagen, but again, Jesuits still with the offensive opportunity. Yeah, Prep doing a nice job just working the X area behind the goal and getting it in from behind and just opening up the lane to shoot. So Shanahan now with it alone. Loose ball. Fairfield Prep will chase it down. That one is going to go to the blue wave. Now Darian finally going to get the possession here. Let's see if they can get it over and start to work their own offense. So first offensive look for the blue wave. They're going to send out their attack line for this one. Rupenstein now with it. Loose ball. Fairfield Preps looking for the scrum. And that one's going to, possession's going to stay with the blue wave. Yeah, great, great check there by number 22, Will Essie on the prep side. 
So Lancaster will check in for the wave. Getting back out over to it. They're gonna move this ball. They'll have it near their, their own 30 yard line. So McGuckin over to Elliott Lancaster. Lancaster moving this one along. Trying to find an open player downfield. Of course, we're watching this game on the DAF Media Network. Joint venture between the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. Shot there from McGuckin. That one's just going to go high above the net. Of course, the Bowden lacrosse commit just missing the net. Number 42, Matthew Barry. Yeah, good, good recognition there by McGuckin, realizing he had a short stick defender on him, just trying to get around him. Dodge towards the goal. Shot going to be just off. So now the sophomore, Ben Bilodeau, take possession for the wave. Bilodeau still moving this one along, gets a shot, and that one will go in. The first goal of the season for the Blue Wave comes from sophomore Ben Bilodeau. Yeah, nice shot there off the wing, just got the angle and saw it and put it right in. It almost looked like it hit the post and then bounced off the goalkeeper. Not sh too sure about that one. Might be able to see on the replay here. Yeah, Ben Bilodeau got a nice look at it over near the 20, 25 yard line. So Darian will get tie this one up at one. And again, that's the versatility that this Darian attack can produce. If they win those faceoffs, get those possessions, sure as doubt they will score. Yeah, you're exactly right. They just need to get the ball in their sticks and they can do a lot with it as they're an offensive powerhouse coming into the season. Yeah, Darian last year fell short. They lost in the FCX semifinals as well as the Class L semifinals. They're looking to make it back to both of those championship games. Scrum still going on here. Looks like Fairfield is going to get it, but. So possession's going to go to the wave. You can see here Fairfield Prep looking a little unhappy after that scrum. But Darian will happily move this ball along and take another offensive shot at it. So again, Darian still moving along. Lancaster going down. There's going to be a flag thrown out. Yeah, looks like they're going to get contact from behind there on the push. So it looks like Darian will get the favor of that penalty. Just going to let play keep going here before they call anything yet. So Bilodeau with it. Back out over to the front for the wave. Still trying to move this along. Number 16, Wes Scallon. Scallon pass, that one's going to be a little low, but recovered by Porter Barnett. Barnett out in front, looking for an open player of Ryan Thurlow out in front, but still recovered by Elliott Lancaster. Yeah, we see Porter taking that ex attackman position that usually Picorni takes, so he's definitely stepping up to the plate and taking such a vital position to this offense. So Scallon over to Barnett, flag still thrown on the ground. That got over behind the net. Loose ball. Fairfield Prep's going to come up with this. Referees blow that whistle. So it looks like penalty flag marker will be picked up. So it looks like... Uh So it looks like Darian will be on the man up. Yeah, it looks like six on five man up. Too. So the Blue Wave will be on the man up as they'll look to try to put another goal into this first quarter of play. Back out over Bilodeau. Looking to the right side to Scallon. Bilodeau quick pass to Rupenstein. Over in front, Barnett with the shot, and that one goes in. Porter Barnett, his first goal of the season. A nice one on the man up, and the Blue Wave taking the lead 2-1. to one. Yeah, it's a great job by the Blue Wave offense, just swinging it around, keeping that already man down defense of Fairfield Prep unorganized, and then just taking advantage of the lane to shoot. And Porter Barnett, you know, you give him a shot towards goal, he's not going to miss many of them. And the Richmond lacrosse commit Porter Barnett adds another one to the stat sheet, his first one of the season. And the Blue Wave take the lead against the Jesuits. With two minutes, 50 seconds left to go in quarter number one. That face-off is going to be one. Possession going to go to the Jesuits. They'll look for another spot. Yeah, once again, 
Ryan Back has shown his strength at the Fogo position. Given these, given the Jesuits, these, uh, the, these, um, excuse me, these crucial possessions. Another face-off going into Jesuit side. Fogo spot one of the most important positions of lacrosse. If you have the offensive likes of any attackers, that are going to put balls into the net. The back out over the Jesuits, over behind the net. So looking for an open shot, playing a little bit of a pick out in front. The prep will move this ball along. Back out over to number nine, Finbar Malloy. Malloy with it over to the side. Still trying to move this ball along on the offensive pursuit. Back out over near the 30-yard line. Prep still moving this along. Darian defense holding on strong. They haven't gotten a shot on the Hague in this possession yet. Loose ball. Shot there. That one looks like it hit off the crossbar. Looked like it almost snuck into the net right there, but possession staying with the Jesuits. Yeah, it looks like that one almost bounced down and in, but lucky for Darian to take it out. Another shot out in front. Two penalty flags are thrown. Is that shot on the Hagen will just miss the net. And Prep and Darian having some words out in front of the net. Taking another look out, maybe some contact out in front. And a big hit there by Darian laying out one of the Fairfield Prep players. Yeah, it looked like number 28, Stephen Olvaney. So they're going to get on the hit, and he's going to go to the penalty box. So Olvaney will go down, and Fairfield Prep will have the man up. Big scoring opportunity for the Jesuits. They look to try to equalize this game at two apiece. Hopefully the referees might be talking about it a little bit, but definitely on that replay, big hit there from Mulvaney, having some contact out in front. And timeout's going to be taken by Fairfield Prep head coach Graham Niemi. Try to talk some things over after that big hit. And Thomas Prep is down one, so man up opportunity like this, huge chance for them to try to equalize this game. Yeah, this is a huge opportunity. Just try to capitalize on the numbers advantage here down on the offensive end. And this is one that they can definitely put away here in the final minute and 20 seconds of the first quarter here and just try to go into the second quarter and with at least a tie ball game. Yep, so one minute and 20 seconds left to go in quarter number one. We're going to step aside in the DF Media Network, but we'll be right back. And back here live on the DAF Media Network. It's a nice, sunny, windy Saturday afternoon in late March. Great way to kick off the spring season for all spring sports. And Saturday afternoon lacrosse game, definitely a great way to kick off for these student athletes. So Fairfield Prep will get the man up opportunity. It's going to start with Tim Shanahan. Back out over near the 30-yard line. Prep looking for an open shot. Back out over to Shanahan behind the net of Hagen. Prep quickly moving this ball along. Trying to get an open shot downfield. Over behind the net, Darian doing well on the defense. Lancaster using his stick. Back out over Prep. Still just moving this one, rotating right around the net. Huge shot there by Prep. That one's just going to miss the net of Hagen. The shot there from number six, Theo Rudolph. Yeah, Prep doing a nice job just trying to draw these Darien defenders out and try to create some more space there near the goal. 
So 30 seconds left to go in quarter number one. Prep looking for a last second offensive opportunity. Saved there by Carter Hagen. So Hagen will move this one quickly. Darian still on, or excuse me, uh, Fairfield Prep still on the man up opportunity to loose ball over near the front. That one's going to be picked up by McGuckin. Yeah, good awareness on McGuckin. He was coming in from the substitution box and ball just rolled right towards him. Well, that's going to be stoppage of play. Looks like timeout's going to be taken by Darian. Try to talk some things over, try to draw up a play with 11 seconds left to go in quarter number one. And again, Thomas, when you have a coach like Jeff Bra uh, Jeff uh, Braymeyer who's been around the ropes, this is his 41st season at the helm of the Blue Wave Boys Lacrosse program. So definitely has some plays in the playbook, try to get a goal and go up by two going into the, the second quarter of play. Yeah, as you mentioned, legendary lacrosse coach Braymeyer. He's definitely got something up his sleeve here that he wanted to call a timeout for and just try to draw up here in the last 11 seconds so they can, he can give his team the momentum going into the second quarter. So let's see what he pulls out here. Okay, so 11 seconds left to go. We're going to step aside in the DF Media Network. We'll be right back. And back here live on the DF Media Network. So 11.2 seconds left to go until quarter number two. This Darien team, they call the timeout, try to draw up a play on the offense and try to best this Jesuits team by two going into the second quarter of play. So 11 seconds left to go. Darien starting with it over near the 35 yard line. McGuckin moving this one along, being evaded by multiple defenders. Still moving this one along, four seconds left to go. Can you get a shot at it? And McGuckin's just going to hold that one, so Blue Wave couldn't get a shot on. Fairfield Prep doing a nice job on the offense, and Thomas, first quarter of play, Darian went down early, one to nothing, but came back with two nice goals from Billadeau and Barnett, putting them up by one. Yeah, Darian did a nice job flipping the script from the first few minutes. You know, they got the turnovers on defense that helped get their offense going on the field, and that led to some capitalized opportunities there, of course, to capitalize on the man-up situation for them. And as for Fairfield Prep, they started off really strong, got that early goal, but then just really haven't been taking advantage of their shots, haven't been finishing their shots, which, of course, is hard to do against such a great goalkeeper of Carter Hagen, but they got to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net uh, here going forward. So one quarter down, three to go. We're right back in the DF Media Network for the start of the second quarter of play. And back here live on the DF Media Network. So one quarter down, still three to go. Blue Wave lead two to one here early on from the Darien High School Stadium field as, you know, again, both these teams will switch their respective sides and possession will start with Darien. So McGuckin will get it started for the Blue Wave. We're underway here in the second quarter of play, being evaded, trying to evade two Fairfield Prep defenders. Does a nice job getting back on his feet. Yeah, once again, 
out of the break. Bearfield Prep gonna double team him, and that was a great move there by McGuckin to just dodge them and get out in some space. So McGuckin all alone in the backfield. Bearfield Prep doing a nice job on the defense, guarding him number 44, Jack Mahoney. The possession will once again go to the wave. Thurlow now with it for Darian. He's going to bring this one all the way back over behind his own net. Ball now over to Ben Bilodeau. Ball now with Elliott Lancaster moving this one along. Mahoney trying to guard him over to Bilodeau over at the 30-yard line. Bilodeau looking for an open player down near the front of the net. He'll be forced to go back. They hold up number 22, Morgan Rupenstein. Rubenstein with it over to Barnett. Barnett moving this one along over near the 15-yard line. Barnett out in front, dives out, just gets, tries to get a shot on it, just missing the, the open net out in front, but possession will stay with the wave. Yeah, it looks like Barnett was looking for the cutter and then just decided to take it himself when it wasn't there. Nearly an amazing shot there in goal by Barnett. So again, back out over behind side, Thurlow. Try to move this one along, maybe get a shot at it. Over in front. Barnett with the shot. That one just misses, but possession will stay with the wave. Nice job to track that one down number 16, West Scallon. Yeah, great hustle to keep possession and keep their offense going. And you take a look at that replay. Thurlow, nice pass out over to Barnett. Put a nice shot, shot on it, but that one will just miss the net. The ball now over to Rupenstein. Over near the 15, all alone with it over on the far side. Ball now over to Barnett. And they shot on it earlier. Had one of the two of Darian's goals today. Again, back at Darian looking for a shot. That one's going to be picked up by Fairfield Prep. And we'll stop another Darian offensive attack. And Prep will be back on the offense for the first time in this quarter, number two. Yeah, nice stop there from Prep. Just get the possession back instead of their own offense. So Prep will get back on the offense. Darian defense will look on site. Try to stop Fairfield Prep from tying this game at two. Primarily a low scoring game between you know two of the top teams in the country. Darian sitting at number 10 spot. Of course with preseason rankings, Fairfield Prep at the number 23. So both these teams in the top 25 in the nation. But still low scoring, only three goals from both of these teams so far. Yeah, as you mentioned so far, defensive battle. And with those rankings, both of them being in the top 25, this will definitely this will definitely have an impact on where they end up after the game in the rankings. Yeah, both these teams, again, whatever team wins, definitely going to move up in the rankings. But again, shot there. That one's just going to go and miss the net of Carter Hagen. But possession will stay with the Jesuits as Tim Shanahan was there to pick that one up. So Prep now with it, Shanahan behind the net. Still trying to move this along for the Jesuits. Back out over, still trying to move this ball along. Over near the 30. Shanahan out in front. Nice stick movement there by Morgan Rupenstein. Yeah, that was a great job there by Rupenstein, just forcing Prep outside of that zone. Trying to force him down the alley and have him clear that ball out. So again, back out over Shanahan. Long stick there of Darien. Out in front, shot there, just missing the net of Hagen. There was a shot there by number six for the Jesuits, Theo Rudolph. But again, once again, possession staying with Prep. So it took some time off, 7.45 left to go in quarter number two. Darien defense playing strong right now, Tom. With the long stick, he'll pick it up. So the Jesuits fail to score on that offensive possession. Hagen will give that one over to Tom, and Darian will start back up right up on the offense. Yeah, what a great check there by Tom because Shanahan had him beat there for a sec. But as he rose stick up to shoot, Tom just got his long pull in there and was able to force it out. Scallon with it. Shot there out in front. That one's going to be stopped up by the prep goaltender. Number 42, Matthew Barry with the save. 
Prep Darian on the had a wide open here. shot out in front. Prep on the fast break. But that one's going to be stopped up by Darian. So I'll get a nice little movement on that one. And Tom will soar that ball all the way. Nice possession grab there by number 17, Connor Lane, with the long stick. Yeah, Prep did a nice job for, with their attackman there, riding those defenders of Darian defense and nearly forced a turnover on the long ball. So Billado now with it over near the 40-yard line. He'll try to move this ball along. Send it over to Luke Caesar for the wave. Billado heavily guarded over near the 30. Making some nice moves. Tries to get a shot on and Billado will. And the blue wave now go up three to one. Yeah, what a great move towards down the lane as he just fought through all the contact and he got his stick through somehow and just finished the shot. So number seven, Ben Bilodeau with his second goal of the night and puts up Darian by two. Huge job there by the blue wave. Again, going up on this prep team that is still very much in this game. Yeah, you saw on the replay there, Bulldo under all sorts of duress. Managed to fight right through it. So again, Ben Bulldo, only a sophomore. He was a freshman on this Darien team last year. Had some nice goals, especially a big goal in that game against Brunswick just a year ago. But and Bilodeau get getting a lot of playing time for the Wave as they'll try to get a face-off win out over near the 40. Looking for a quick scrum at. That one's going to be going to, looks like the Darien side will regain that possession. It's like Rupenstein. Managed to pick up the loose ball. So Rupenstein will get it for the wave. And again, that was one of the things Darian struggled last year was at the Fogo position, not winning those face-offs against especially powerhouse teams such as St. Anthony's and Manhasset, who just had excellent Fogos. They would win every face-off and practically score in every face-off. Yeah, that was definitely still a question mark in terms of who was going to get it, who's going to get that spot at the Fogo position and how, how well they're going to do coming into the season. And so far it looks like Darian have made some improvements there already. So again, right there, they'll get possession, but loose ball is going to go to the Jesuits. So they'll try to bounce back out on the offensive side. Shanahan with it. Now over to Luke Shanahan. So Shanahan alone. Prep trying to play a pick over near the 30-yard line. Both these teams still trying to move it along, but Darian holding strong on the defense. Long stick touch there by Tom, but possession's going to stay with Fairfield Prep. So the Jesuits still moving this one along over behind the net of Hagen. Tom applying the pressure out in front. Shanahan making a nice spin move. Trying to get a shot on loose ball there. That one's going to be picked up by the Blue Wave. They're going to go on the hurry up offense. Fast break opportunity with the long stick. Yeah, nice check there from Connor, Connor Lane there and moving the ball down the field on, on the transition play. So again, ball now back over to McGuckin. Sends this one once again now over to Rupenstein. Of course, you're watching this game on the DAF Media Network, joint venture team, the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. Liam Tomaszewski and Thomas Aponte. So glad to be here live from the Darien High School Stadium field for this home opener for the Blue Wave, taking on the Fairfield Prep Jesuits. Four minutes left to go until halftime. Shot there by Porter Barnett. That one's just going to miss the net, but possession will stay with the Wave. So we're taking another look at that replay. Barnett wind up that one, but... That one will just go left of the net of Barry. But possession once again staying with Darianne. Rubenstein over to McGuckin. Making some nice moves over near the 25. Goes down to the ground. Gets a little shot at it, but that one's going to be picked up by Scallon. Yeah, McCrody there with the check. Shot there. That one just missing the net. It was a big shot there by Scallon who picked up the possession for the wave. You see, he trailed this one all the way along, wound up for that one, but just missed the net of Barry. And I shot by Scallon getting towards what they call the money spot there. Trying to get the shot in there. So Barnett over near, behind the net. He'll try to move this one on, looking for an open player in front of the net of Barry. Back out over to McGuckin. 
Still trying to move this along. Gets a little check there. Shot from Lancaster. And that one will go in for the Blue Wave as they now lead 4-1. to one. Yeah, what a great assist there from McGuckin. Working towards the middle of the field. Allowed Lancaster to come off of the defenders there and get, get into open space. And he just dumped it off to Lancaster for the shot. And he had a wide open shot there and able to finish it in the top of the net. I mean, take another look at that replay. McGuckin being evaded by the defenders. Gave a nice pass over to Lancaster and using the top shelf of that net to his advantage as Blue Wave now lead by a margin of three. So a huge spot for Lancaster. Had some nice goals last year. He had two against Yorktown just over a year ago. And again, the Wave puts another one on the scorecard as they now lead by three. And of course, Lancaster had the game winner last year in the final two minutes against Prep. So wind up, quick shot there by Prep, but they'll stay in the offense. Quick shot there by number 44, Jack Mahoney. Looks like just tried to put some pressure on the Carter Hagen, who hasn't seen too many shots on net this game. Yeah, this Darian defense has definitely done a nice job as compared to last year, just limiting the shots that Fairfield take and not leaving their goalkeeper out, out to dry. So Fairfield Prep will still move this one along over in their own territory. Back guy over, haven't seen a goal since that first quarter of play, the first opener of this game. Put Darian in that tight spot, but Darian bouncing back with four in a row. Shot there by Prep. That one just missing the net of Hagen, and possession will stay with the Jesuits. That was a shot there by number six for Jesuits, Theo Rudolph. So Shanahan now with it, winds up for that one on the ground, and a big shot from Shanahan putting his second goal on the night. Yeah, what a move there towards that wide out wing position from Tim Shanahan. Just snaps his stick towards the goal, and Puts that one away, right past Carter Hagen. Maybe he wasn't second the shot fully there. So Shanahan gets his second goal of the day, preps two goals on the night. And again, I mean, he was heavily defended by Charlie Tom with the long stick, but again, bounced that one on the ground and will just miss the net, or excuse me, will just go into the net of Carter Hagen. Another face-off coming up, face-off X. Still fighting for that one. That one's going to go to the Jesuit side. They'll try to go quick on the hurry-up offense. Shot there, just missing the net of Hagen. The shot there from number 22, Will Easy. And we're starting to see the face-off advantage that this prep team has had over the past few years and still seems like they have coming into this year. To try to get the face-off and then move quickly on the offensive side and try to capitalize off of it. So Prep still trying to move this one along. Luke Shanahan back out over the point looking for Finbar Malloy. Back out over to Rudolph. So Luke Shanahan over near the 20-yard line. Send that one back over to the point. Malloy with control of the ball. Finbar Malloy, a star uh, football player for the Fairfield Prep Jesuits. That guy over to Shanahan. He'll try to move this one alone all the way in the backfield. Fairfield Prep with a nice offensive control. Got a minute and 10 seconds left to go until halftime. Prep quickly moving this one along. Shanahan trying to wind up for a shot, will fake it. Nice defense by Darian to hold a shot on that one. Yeah, they kept forcing him towards the goal line there. And He's able to, eventually his angle disappeared and he just had to let up. Shanahan with it alone. Does a nice backhand shot on the ground as that one will go in for the Jesuits. Tim Shanahan with the hat trick, his third goal of the day. Yeah, Shanahan, as we said, one of the key players coming into today and he's already showing what he can do here as, he, as you said, going to get his third goal here. So Shanahan once again gets a nice down low shot just beating the likes of Carter Hagen. This Fairfield Prep now only within a margin of one with 45 seconds left to go until the halftime break. Yeah, it was a great job by Shanahan moving towards the middle of the field and just finding the lane to shoot and going low where Hagen couldn't quite get a stick to in time. So another face-off over, face-off scrum. That one's going to go to the Jesuit side. 
They'll try to move this one along, and that one's going to be a timeout taken by the Fairfield Prep Jesuits. So we're going to step aside in the DF Media Network, 43 year score, and we'll be right back. And back here live on the DAF Media Network. So 4-3 to three your score in favor of the boys in blue. And again, Thomas Carter Hagen getting beat twice now by Tim Shanahan just in the second quarter play within about two minutes of each other. But right now, Fairfield Prep, huge offensive look before going to halftime. Yeah, closing out the second quarter here. Fairfield Prep done a much better job than they did at the end of the first quarter, finishing off their shots and capitalizing on those on those BOGO play, big plays and on the time of possession that they've had in the second quarter. Yeah, Fairfield Prep, they've done well. They've won the past couple of face-offs have gone to their advantage. Now the Jesuits look to wind up, try to get another shot on to Hagen before the halftime break. Ball back out over the 35. Jesuits will try to move this one along over to Malloy. Alone in the backfield, Lancaster on the one-on-one -on -one with Malloy. Malloy trying to move this one along, trying to get a shot on out in front. That one's going to be stopped up by Carter Hagen. And Darian trying to move quick here. Ten seconds to go. So Darian's trying to move this one along. And strategic timeout taken by head coach Jeff Braymeyer. With eight seconds left to go. So a big stop by Carter Hagen. And now the Blue Wave will try to get their offensive timeout. Try to put another goal and make that margin up back up to two. Yeah, let's see what they come out with here to finish off the half. Obviously to finish off the first quarter, their play didn't quite work as couldn't quite get the ball in towards the goal, but see if they have more success on what they drop here. So a timeout taken by the Blue Wave, and eight seconds left to go until halftime, and we'll be right back in the DAF Media Network. Again, back here live on the DF Media Network. Of course, you're watching this game. Liam Tomaszewski, Thomas Aponte. So glad I could be here live in the Darien High School Stadium field for the matchup between two of the top teams in the top 25 in the country, the Blue Wave and the Jesuits. Darien now down the way in front, looking for a shot is Rupenstein, and he'll get it. Two seconds left to go on the clock, and Darien goes back up by two. What a great shot there by Rupenstein, putting in the top right corner of the net. Didn't have a ton of, it, of an angle there, but... What a play there. They drew up to find Rubenstein open right near the goal. And about, what a great finish. He had about an inch of room over up on the corner of that net, but he hit it all. Bilodo to Rubenstein. They both connect, and Darian back out up by two. So within six seconds, the Blue Wave offensive production. What a play there by Darian. And again, showing what they truly are. Playing like a top 10 team in the country. Quick face off one there by Darian, but time will expire on the clock. So Thomas Darian gets a late goal there from Rupenstein 
adds to the lead by two now. But again, Fairfield Prep, Tim Shanahan, the name for the Jesuits. He has three on the night. We'll see what this Darien team can try to do coming out of the halftime break. Yeah, it definitely feels like with that goal, that momentum has just shifted back into Darien's favor after Fairfield Prep put a couple behind the net themselves. And now he's going into the second half. Both these teams are going to have to make adjustments here. Fairfield Prep's going to have to figure out how they're going to finish on offense in this Darien team. They've been doing pretty well all around so far. Maybe they could do a little better at the faceoff position, but they're going to need to force turnovers if they can't do that. So 5-3 to three your score in favor of Darien, and we'll be right back in the DF Media Network for the start of the second half of play from the stadium field. The Darien Foundation was founded in 1998 by Richard and Maureen Chilton, and the thesis behind that founding was to bring technology to the Darien public school systems. And that launched us, and that got us going, and through technology and capital project initiatives, we've now funded over five and a half million over the last 24 years to build a better Darien. Our board really likes to get involved and assist the partners that we collaborate with, whether it's a grant for a youth project or a grant from a community service, schools, the police, often they come to us with ideas that we help them bring to fruition. The Darien Foundation recently awarded the Darien Police Department two grants. One was for LaserShot and the other for Faro technology. LaserShot technology is based on decision making. It may come down to using their firearm, but in reality, we would like them to talk the situation down where you use less lethal force, and this program allows us to do that. Police, drop the gun! Faro technology gives us a 360 degree view, catching all the points we need to catch in our accident scene. It also takes a lot less time. This allows us to open up roads, get traffic flowing a lot quicker than we ever used to be able to. We can also map the inside of buildings, we can use it at outdoor crime scenes, indoor crime scenes. It's really used for a plethora of investigations. It's a tool that most other departments may not have their hands on just yet. And thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have that technology. At Home in Darien is a nonprofit organization that helps senior citizens to remain living independently in their home and in the community. We provide important services to help them do so, such as transportation. Thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have this amazing new van, and we are so excited about it and what it'll do for the community. From all standpoints, this is going to be a real improvement in the services we provide, both in terms of safety and comfort. The Darien Foundation is important to the community in the scope that they reach out to answer needs. Post 53 is the town's ambulance service. We respond to over 1,600 emergency calls a year. We're a vital service that has been here for 51 years. The technology upgrades provided by the Darien Foundation has been a game changer for us. It's allowed us to improve our training. It has helped us hone our skills. You don't know how important an ambulance is until you actually need it. Thanks to our partnership with the Darien Foundation, who's provided all this technology and several grants throughout the years, we're able to continue to be prepared to be well-trained and well-staffed to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever you need it. The Darien Foundation is really excited to be able to launch a new program for the Darien schools, which will benefit students K through 12 in all seven schools. This is the new robotics program, which will be an extracurricular opportunity for students to build robots compete against other leagues and collaborate together. Our robotics program is going to benefit students in so many ways. In regular classes, students are always looking for the right answer, that there's only one way to answer something. Robotics is completely different. In robotics, you learn that there are multiple solutions to every problem. You learn that you have these obstacles that you have to overcome. You have to really be a creative, problem solver. And most importantly, you need to persevere. Early on in the process, the Darien Foundation reached out to administration and the offer to provide funding for a project and it just dovetailed beautifully to the goals of the strategic plan. I look forward to continuing to work closely with the Darien Foundation, both on this project and other projects down the line. 
We welcome ideas for possible grants. We like to do grants that promote and strengthen our community. Sometimes it's from an organization, sometimes it's from our emergency service partners, or it's from the Darien Public Schools. One of our most popular grants, which was the Playground by the Sound, came to us from four Darien moms who said, let's get together and figure out how to build this. Thanks to the generosity of our board members and officers, every dollar you give to the Darien Foundation goes directly to the grants that we're supporting. I invite all of you to help us move our community further and support the Darien Foundation. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at DAFmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. And back here live on the DAF Me Network, Blue Wave lead the Fairfield Prep Jesuits 5-3. to three. And Thomas, of course, we talked about a little bit in our pregame, the two coaches in this matchup. We'll start with Darian, of course, legendary head coach Jeff Braymeyer. 665 wins, one of the most winningest high school coaches in all of the United States for high school boys lacrosse. Started this program. He's been the only head coach 
in its series history right there in 41 seasons. And, of course, you look at the Fairfield Prep Jesuit side, Graham Niemi in his eighth season at Commander-in-Chief for the Jesuits. Again, bringing home, trying to bring home first state championship for the Jesuits. This season fell a little bit short last year, of course, but again, back at it now in the third quarter of play. Face off still with the scrum out in front. That one's going to be picked up by the Jesuits. Of course, both these teams switching their respective sides. Fairfield Prep quickly moving on it. Shanahan back out over behind the net of Hagen. Yeah, nice job there by Prep. Didn't get the face off initially, but kept with the scrum. So again, we'll still try to move this one along Fairfield Prep. Another big face off win early on in this contest. So the Jesuits move this one along over near the 40. Malloy looking for this one out in front. Back out over the Jesuits now. Move this one along over near Shanahan. Being guarded by William Bonner. Shanahan trying to get a ground low shot. That one just going to go out of play. But possession will stay with Prep. Yeah, Shanahan never quite had the angle there, it seems like. Had some players cutting in, but they're in defense. A nice job just covering them up. So again, Fairfield Prep will still try to move this one along quickly. Back out over near the crease, but Fairfield Prep looking for an open shot. Back now behind the net, Shanahan alone with it. The long stick of Bonner trying to hold him in his own place. Shanahan, he's going to go try to leap for that one, but huge shot's going to go way above the net, and possession again going to stay with Prep. Yeah, it seems like this Prep offense had, had the most success when they pulled, pulled this Darian defense out from the top of the dome and then beat it up to the top and then have a nice shot there. So Prep still looking for a shot. Big save there by Carter Hagen as Darian will get back on the offensive possession. There's a shot there from number nine, Finbar Malloy. And a big hit over near the Darian bench side. Going to have some contact with the Luke Shanahan over near Briggs McGuckin. Multiple flags are going to be thrown. Got about four or five flags down the field. It looked like there was going to be an initial slashing there by Malloy coming down the field, but then some extra contact after the play by it looks like number 91, Luke Shanahan. So it looks like Briggs McGuckin's going to get eaten up by at least two to three. Fairfield Prep defenders. I mean, you saw the initial slashing there, and then by Malloy, and then Shanahan just takes him out over near the 50. But Darian definitely getting the advantage on that one. So Prep going to have two players in the penalty box. So Fairfield Prep, Darian going on the double man up, as you would call it. Still trying to move this ball along over in their own zone. So again, back out over, trying to get a shot on it. That one will just miss, but possession will stay with the wave. Back out over, over behind the net of Barry. Caesar out in front trying to get a shot on it. And Briggs McGuckin will put a big shot on after getting a huge hit there with the contact by the Darian bench as they now lead 6-3. to three. Yeah, Darian just had a huge numbers advantage there on that offensive possession. And it almost feel, felt inedible there that they were going to score there. Just overall for, the, for this team of such a high caliber, pretty easy possession there for them. Just finished it off. So McGuckin with a big goal. I mean, you take a look at that replay. Caesar right out through the middle. McGuckin just put that one away. Big goal there for the senior captain. So Bowden lacks commit. McGuckin and Darian looking to try to get another faceoff at. That one's going to be one. Looks like by Darian out in front, but still a scrum on it. Of course, after the goal. Uh, both squads go back to even strength. So again, it looks like Fairfield Prep will get the final touches in that one for that possession. That guy now over through the middle. Shanahan 
Sends this one over near the front. Heavily guarded over there by Darian Defense. Nine minutes left to go in this third quarter play. Darian with now a three goal lead. Fairfield Prep trying to bounce back. I mean, three goals from Tim Shanahan, but let's see if the rest of Fairfield Prep Jesuits offense try to do some offensive production. Back out over now through the middle. Prep looking for it over by the 30 yard line. Still trying to find that open lane. Huge shot there, but Lancaster tried to get a stick on that one, but possession going to stay with the Jesuits. Yeah, number six, Theo Rudolph has had a few shots so far. He's, he tries to put one in the back of the net, but just unable to find it so far today. So again, back out over. Big wind-up shot there by, looks like Luke Shanahan, but big save there by Carter Hagen. Yeah, Carter Hagen, great reaction save there. So Darian bring it up the field. So again, ball now back over near the 40-yard line. Darian still going to try to move this one along, but again, big save there by Carter Hagen. Keep this game at bay in favor of Darian. Again, ball back over for Darian. Barnett with it for the Blue Wave. Barnett's going to chase it down, gets a little bit hit there by Prep, winds up a big save there by Matthew Barry. Yeah, that was a nice move by Barnett. You just run around and evade his defenders and break free. And now we see the turnover here, and this could cost Fairfield Prep. Interception, down low shot by the Blue Wave by Thurlow, but that one again is going to be stopped up by Matthew Barry. Yeah, nice recovery there by Barry. So again, still looking for it over on the backside. Fairfield Prep now over behind the net. I'll try to move this one along, making a little substitution out for the Jesuits. Possession taken there by Prep. Looking over now near the net. Hagen on a nice save on the last Fairfield Prep possession. Ball back out over Malloy. Couldn't get a shot on. Big defense there by the Wave. Is that's going to be a shot by Prep? And that one will just beat Carter Hagen. Yeah, it was a great ball movement there. Pull the defenders towards that X area behind the goal and find the open man right on that wing position. Number 40, Dylan McCarthy with the goal for the Jesuits. Cuts this lead for Darian back down to just two. So again, this is what we saw in that game last year over at Rafferty Stadium, a very rainy night, but again, it was close throughout, and then Darian got a nice goal at the end just to beat this prep team by one. Huge way to start off the season for Darian, but again, this game, similar to that one, very close between both of these teams. Yeah, just like that last year's game, kind of going back and forth, and who's doing well at a certain time. And right now, Prep is starting to come on strong here as third quarter rolls on. So again, face off one there by the Jesuits. Darian's gonna look to go back on the defensive side. So the Jesuits with it over near the 30 yard line. Malloy with it, he's gonna chase it down over near the left side. Six to four, your score. Five minutes, 45 seconds left to go in this third quarter of play. Of course, you're watching this game on the DF Minor Joint Venture Team, the Darian Foundation and the Darian Athletic Foundation. Liam Tomaszewski and Thomas Aponte live from Darian High School Stadium Fields. We get a shot there by number six for the Jesuits. Theo Rudolph, that one's just going to miss, but possession staying in favor of Prep. Yeah, Rudolph, a nice dodge there down the middle of the field. So again, back out, loose ball over there. Darian trying to get the slash on it. Shanahan's going to be forced to go down on the ground to regain that possession. Loose ball now. Darian looking to scoop it up. A little bit of a trip there over by Connor Lane, but big hit, a check over near the Darian bench. Some contact from both of these teams. 
And a flag's gonna be thrown. Looks like that's gonna go in favor of the wave. Yeah, once again there on the prep side of motions, flying high as they try to get back into this game and it looks like just took a little too far there. That's once again gonna cost them another numbers advantage here. So McGuckin will once again go down. A lot of contact from this Fairfield prep team trying to get some energy onto their side, but Darian will once again get another man up opportunity. So far Darian has converted on multiple man up opportunities. So prep giving them another one is not doing them any favors here on this one as these penalties have just been costing them goals so far. So another look coming for the blue wave on the man up opportunity. Again, two contacts coming from Fairfield Prep against number 12, Briggs McGuckin. But again, this one will cost Fairfield Prep a man up opportunity for the wave. So face off one, or excuse me, that one's possession gonna start with the wave. McGuckin will send this one over behind the net to Barnett. Barnett over to Caesar. Out in front looking for a shot is McGuckin. That one just goes on the ground and misses possession. Looking to go to the Jesuits as they'll regain that one. But it looks like that one's just going to go out of play, but that one's going to go to the blue wave. Yeah, the Starian Attackman did a nice job coming out in the 2 3 1 offensive set and then just moving well off the ball, trying to open up the space and pull the defenders away from the goal. Just unable to convert there. Possession back now over Rupenstein. Sending this one over behind the net to Caesar. Looking in front, trying to get a shot on it was Billado, but that one's going to be stopped up out in front by Matthew Barry. Another great save there by Barry, keeping his team in it here as they can't afford to go down another goal. So still with it, another bounce shot there. That one just going to miss, but Caesar will regain possession for the wave. Fairfield Prep holding on on three offensive shots from there in. So Caesar back over to Barnett. Still looking for an opportunity near the five-yard line. Looks like Prep will now be even strength here as the penalty has Gone away. So shot there by Barnett. That one's just going to go way out, but possession will stay with Darianne. Still holding on strong. 3.51 left to go in the third. Ball now over to Barnett. He's alone over behind the net of Barry. Looking for an open shot opportunity out in front. Loose ball. That one's going to be picked up by Barry. He's going to send this one over to Fairfield Prep. They'll get an offensive opportunity look. So a little contact there from Thurlow trying to break it up, but Prep moving this one very quickly with Theo Rudolph sprinting his way halfway across the field. Ball now back over to the Fairfield prep side. Again on the offensive side, back over near behind the net of Hagen. Trying to look for an open pass opportunity. Yeah, let's see if prep can continue to be efficient on their passing here. It's really set up most of their goals. It's just the quick passes and find, finding their man near the goal and with the, with the angle there. So Malloy now with it over in front. Trying to get a shot on That one just going to miss the net of Hagen. It was a ground low shot there from Finbar Malloy, but... Again, Shanahan was there to get that possession. Still staying with Fairfield Prep. Yeah, it was a nice move there by Malloy. Getting towards the goal, but just a little bit off to the left. So again, puck now back, or excuse me, a ball now back over the Fairfield Prep side. Trying to move along over near the 25-yard line. Malloy with it alone in the backfield. Shanahan with it. Bonner doing a nice job with the long stick. Try to block Malloy from getting any shots. Onto net as well as Shanahan. Ground shot there from Shanahan. That one's just going to miss the net, and, but possession staying with the Jesuits. Yeah, Bonner's had a great day defensively, just holding up any sort of moves there by Fairfield Attackman as they try to get towards the net. So ball now still staying with the Jesuits. Trying to move this one along. Malloy still trying to evade it. Shot there from Luke Shanahan, saved there by Hagen. 
But Fairfield Prep will still stay with this one. Minute and 44 left to go in the third. Ball now back over near the 35. Over to Theo Rudolph. Rudolph gets a shot. Saved there by Hagen, but Shanahan in the backfield to keep the possession alive. And once again over near the back. Prep trying to set something off, set something up in front of the goal. Looking for an open shot. Darian doing a nice job trying to hold on over on the defensive side. Long shot there from Prep over in front. A little contact out over near the front. Doing a nice job for Darian, but Shanahan keeping the possession for the wave. See back out there, Hagen putting his stick out there to make a nice little stop, but the shot will just go left of his net. Fairfield Prep trying to maybe look for a last minute possession. Keep Darian from not getting anything shot there by Shanahan. That one will just miss the top of the net. But Fairfield Prep, they've had four to five looks throughout the majority of the last three, four minutes of this third quarter of play. Yeah, so far those last three looks, just been just a little bit off the goal. See if they try to set something up, try to get a better one. So Rudolph back out, winds up a shot. That one, you heard that off the post. So that one will go off the post and possession's gonna go to the wave. With Wes Scallon putting his stick out. 32 seconds left to go in the third. Yeah, great job by Scallon running the width of the field and putting out his stick there at the last second and make sure, making sure Darian gets his possession back with so, just under 30 seconds to go. So Darian might try to look for you know, a last second opportunity. McGuckin now with it over near the 35. Passes this one over to the far side to Thurlow. Now back over to Barnett. Barnett with it, trying to make some nice moves. Circles this one around, gets a low shot on it. Shot there from Barnett. That one's going to stay with Darian over near Morgan Rupenstein. Yeah, it looks like Barnett almost had Scallon there on the cut. So Rupenstein out in front, just misses his open man. His time will expire in the third quarter of play. So Thomas, a little bit of a slower third quarter play for both of these teams. But again, it's only a two-goal margin for Fairfield Prep. They just have to put the stamp on the offense. Yeah, it looks like they just need to work on finishing shots and they also need to stay composed here in the final 12 minutes of play. Again, man, up, man down situation for them, cost them a goal and just gonna, just need to try to stay composed and make sure they sure up their offense. So six to four, your score in favor of the wave. We'll be right back on the DF Media Network for the last quarter of play from the stadium field.
Yeah, back here live on the DF New York. So 12 minutes left to go in this game. Two goal margin between Darien and Fairfield Prep. We're underway here in the fourth quarter. Possession one there by the Jesuits. They'll try to move this one along over near the 20. Fast paced offense, Fairfield Prep. They know they need two goals. There's a hefty margin when you have a guy like Carter Hagen in net. Yeah, but winning those face offs and keeping possession will definitely help them there in going into this final quarter. So Shanahan now with it alone over near the 20 yard line. They'll send this one back all the way. So again, still slow play for the Jesuits. They'll make a little substitution. Back out over to Finbar Malloy. Malloy now with it. Back over alone, being guarded heavily by the Darien defense. Fairfield Prep looking for a shot. Winding up, couldn't get one. Rupenstein with a nice job on the defense with his stick. Shanahan now with it, looking for a shot. Winds up for a shot. That one is Theo Rudolph, but that one just missed the net of Hagen. Yeah, I just bounced it short of the goal, and that one's going to be forced wide. Yeah, ball now back over Fairfield Prep, still looking for it. Winding up for a shot, the Jesuits. Find an open man of Tim Shanahan. Ball back out over to Luke Shanahan. So again, Jesuits still trying to move this one along. Ball now back over Shanahan out in front. Sends this one over number 21, uh, Griffin Roth. Shanahan with it. Darian defense still holding on strong. Let's see if the Jesuits can put together a better sequence of passes that, like they did in the first half. Try to open up the shot. So Shanahan with it over near the 20. Ball now with it, still looking for an open shot opportunity. Loose ball out in front, huge going up in the air. Fairfield Prep still looking for it. Darian trying to get a scoop at it. So possession's going to stay with the Jesuits. Huge second chance look for Fairfield Prep. Yeah, and that turnover, or nearly turnover forced by uh, William Bonner there with the long pull. He's had a great day so far on the defensive end. The long stick of William Bonner. Definitely doing well on the Darien defensive side. So again, Prep still looking forward, chasing this one down all the way. Back over to Shanahan. Behind the net of Hagen, looking for some room. Out in front, looking for Malloy. Can't, couldn't get a shot on it. That one's going to miss Shanahan. And it's going to be a costly error. Possession's going to go to the wave. Yeah, like you said, a costly error there. The one that, as this time runs out, the, this Fairfield side cannot cannot have. Yeah, definitely an error that Fairfield Prep didn't want to see. They needed to get some shots on that one, put pressure on Darien, try to get this game back to one. But now Darien defense, of course, there's no shot clock, so they can take as much time as they want, try to get some shots on it. But loose ball there is going to go to the Jesuit side. So they'll get another look at it on the offense, still moving this one around quickly. Yeah, great check there by number 22, Will Essie. So they got a loose ball. That one's going to be picked up by Lancaster. Again, nice job by the Darien defense. He's going to sprint his way all the way downfield to the 20, back over to Lancaster, just missing the net. Trying to get a shot on it, but didn't have the ball in his own stick. So again, possession's going to go now to the Jesuit side. And we're seeing this Jesuit defense be much more aggressive here as they know Darianne with no, shot, with no shot clock forced them to make a move towards goal. They know Darianne's just going to try to hold it for as long as they can. Yeah, Darianne tried to get a shot on with number 33, Rowan Levine, but didn't have the ball on his stick, and that one's going to go to the Fairfield prep side. Yeah, we're, we're as you see Darianne, their defense staying much more compact in the middle of the zone as they just... Try to use the outside defenders to push them wide. So again, back over to Shanahan. Fairfield Prep knows they need two to tie it, so they're going to have to get one quickly. Back out over, looking for a shot. That one's going to be laying his body out. It's Briggs McGuckin for that one for a dive. 
Yeah, it looks like that move by McGuckin stopped the shot there from the Jesuits. The Jesuits still looking for a shot. Can't seem to get one. Darien defense holding the perimeter strong. And that one's going to be picked up by Hagen. It's going to keep this game going for Darien. Still up by two. As Darien will try to go the full length of the field for this next possession. That's yeah, a nice job there by Tom denying the pass to Luke Shanahan. As we've seen him have a couple shots so far that have nearly gone in. So timeout's going to be taken. Looks like actually going to be offsides. Looks like it's going to be, be, like gonna be an offsides call. So this possession is going to go to Fairfield Prep now. Another big look for the Jesuits. They've had a couple chances and opportunities throughout this fourth quarter of play, but haven't seen they got too many shots onto the net. So ball back over. Fairfield Prep still looking for it. Of course, we're watching this game on the DAF Media Network, Joey Fedrickson, the Darien Foundation, and the Darien Athletic Foundation. Ian Tomaszewski and Thomas Ponte. So we've got to be here live from the Darien High School Stadium field for a match between number 10 and number 23 teams in the nation. That's going to be a shot there by Prep. Hagan will get the pickup on that one. Huge save there by Carter, and that one's going to be stopped up. Still trying to apply some pressure on us. Luke Shanahan, but nice heads up there, and Darien will regain the possession. Yeah, what a great save there by Hagen as Luke Shanahan got loose on the, on the edge of the net and looked like he had the angle there and just probably would have gone in if it wasn't for the big spoon of Carter Hagen. So again, ball back out over to Briggs McGuckin. He'll try to move this one along Darian, still figuring out which play call they're going to go with. Billado now with it all alone near the 40. He'll send that one over to Rupenstein. Rupenstein with it, being guarded heavily by Fairfield Prep on the solo. Rupenstein, of course, with a nice goal earlier in the game. Let's see what Rupen continued impact yeah, he can have here. Yeah, Rupenstein had that goal just before going to the halftime break. Kept this game for... It uh, went back to uh, a two-goal margin for Darien, so they were it was a 4-3, uh, and then it went to a 5-3 game. So and now Darien's still winning by two late in this fourth quarter of play. And the ball now back over behind the net. Barnett out in front looking for a chip shot. That one's just going to miss the net. Number 16, Wes Scallon with the shot. Yeah, nearly had the slam dunk goal there by Scallon. As Barnett found him through the sea of, de sea of red defenders. So Fairfield Prep still trying to hold on on the defense, but this Darien attack very strong. Thurlow with it. Over back behind the net to Porter Barnett. Barnett sending this one. Wraparound shot just misses the net. Now it's going to be picked up by Matthew Barry. Yeah, nearly a nice play there. Nice finish. Nearly a nice finish by Barnett as he came off the screen by Thurlow. But great job by Prep. Stay with the from the defenders to stay with Porter, Porter by now and just deny him the finish. So ball now back over, Fairfield Prep. Try to get this one with another offensive possession in their favor. Still down two, under four minutes left to go in this game. So Prep's gonna need two pretty quick goals to try to stay in this, but again, they haven't seen too many throughout this fourth quarter of play. Ball now back over to Shanahan. Still trying to move along, looking for maybe a wraparound shot. And as you mentioned now, clock nearing three minutes. Definitely feels like time is becoming more of Fairfield Pretz's enemy here. So a shot there from Luke Shanahan, and that one goes in just missing Carter Hagen, and now it's a one-goal game. Great finish there by Shanahan. He's been looking for the back of the net all game. Finally makes the move and the finish there in the bottom corner. So Luke Shanahan... Gets a huge goal for the Jesuits. You see right there, just wrapped it around Porter Barnett's stick, and that one will go in. Number 91, Luke Shanahan. And a big job there for the Jesuits. Now it's a 6-5 to five ball game. Now this upcoming faceoff going to be huge here. Who's going to get the possession? 
So Darian in need of a big possession here. In need of a face-off win. McGuckin trying to scoop that one up. Penalty flag's going to be thrown. Now they're going to get multiple. Looks like they're going to get it during the play and then after the play, unnecessary roughness after the play. A lot of contact between Fairfield Prep and Darian. Looks like McGuckin went down again. A lot of contact there by the Jesuits. But once again, this Jesuit side just hurting themselves. Giving this Darien team a man up advantage. A lot of contact out in front over by the faceoff X. Referees are going to talk about this one, see who they're going to give this possession to, if they're going to redo it over at the faceoff. But you know, a lot of contact. Fairfield Prep very aggressive throughout this game. Still trying to keep it going. I wonder if, you, if they're going to get a double penalty here on two players. Or if one player was committed both of them. You see definitely multiple penalty markers thrown down on the field. Seems like here maybe that these penalties might just offset maybe contact from both squads, but it's a little hard to tell from our vantage point. Is anyone in, Doesn't in look the like prep penalty box? Looks like there's two guys for prep. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna get Ryan Backus and someone else there. Can't really see who it is. So it looks like back it looks like maybe just Bacchus will be in the box for the Jesuits, but nonetheless Darian will be on the man up opportunity. So just under three minutes left to go in this contest. Darian with the man up advantage. Now of course this gives Darian a huge advantage to either just hold the ball with the extra numbers or try to make something happen. Back there out it front is. and Darian will get a goal and go right back up to two. Number seven, Ben Bilodeau, puts another goal on for this Darien team. They now lead by two. Ben Bilodeau out in front of the net, using his height to his advantage, puts that one down. Take another look at that, Bilodeau just missing Matthew Barry in a huge spot for Darien. They now best this Fairfield prep team now by two. Yeah, Bilodeau, as we talked about a little earlier in the game, just Young sophomore here on the team last year as a freshman, but he's coming up as a rising star and getting some nice playing time in this opening game. So possession's going to go to the Jesuits. And it looks like timeout's going to be taken by head coach Graham Niemi for Fairfield Prep. Try to talk some things over, get, get back another goal that they just missed with a huge man-up opportunity for the Wave. Yeah, definitely going to talk about having some urgency here. Going to try to drop a nice play, get back within one and then try to win the next face off and go at it once again. So seven to five, your score in favor of Darian. We'll step aside in the DF Media Network and we'll be right back. So back here live on the DAF Media Network and again Thomas talking about Fairfield Prep. Penalties have plagued this Fairfield Prep team throughout the entirety of this game, giving Darien those free opportunities on the man up to try to score. Yeah, it definitely feels like this could be a 5-5 game or at least a 6-5 game if it wasn't for those penalties, giving Darien such an advantage to score. And like I said earlier in the game, they're not going to waste those opportunities. So a wind-up shot there by Luke Shanahan, saved there by Hagen, but that one's going to go wide, but 
Possession's going to stay with the Jesuits. Back out over near the front. That one looking for a second chance opportunity, and the Jesuits will get it. Nice job by Tim Shanahan wrapping around the goal and making a nice spin move inside. And Carter Hagen with the initial stop, but just unable to get the second chance opportunity. So a big shot there by number 21 for the Jesuits. Making a big goal. Number 21, Griffin Roth. So Rothy will get the goal, the sophomore for the Jesuits. And puts this one in a big spot. Or excuse me, Griffin Roth, uh, the junior for the Jesuits, puts this one in a big spot. Because again, one goal deficit. And of course, that only took 20 seconds there. And Jeff Prep definitely right back in this one. So Rody, a big spot for the Jesuits. Trying to get a face off. That one's going to be won by Fairfield Prep. Still plenty of time on the clock. Back out over the front. Big hit there by Tom. No call. And there's going to be a flag thrown. Penalty marker. Yeah, it looks like they might get Tom on either cross check or a hit to the head. So he'll probably Prep have to get leave a free the game. shot there. Shanahan with it. Out in front. Just can't give Darian the ball. Yeah, once they stop play there. Darian probably go a man down. So big spot here for the Jesuits. Maybe trying to get something here with the flag thrown. Back out over Malloy, over near the 25 yard line. Lancaster on the block. Luke Shanahan winds up and that one goes in and we have a tie game. And after being denied countless times, he's gonna have another goal He's gotten this prep team right back in it. Both Shanahan's coming up huge in this game, having mo the majority of these of the, of the goals here for Fairfield Prep. And now we're all knotted up at seven with just 90 seconds to go. So Tim Shanahan and Luke Shanahan of the prime offensive powerhouses for this Fairfield Prep Jesuits team. And just like that, we're tied at seven. And you can see the Fairfield Prep student section over on the far side. They made the trip down to Darien. And a huge spot for Fairfield Prep against the number 10 team in the country. Yeah, if you're Fairfield Prep, of course, got the momentum shifted your way now, but you've got to feel pretty good coming up with a faceoff. They've won pretty much all the faceoffs so far in this game, so if they can just get one more offensive possession here, they can hold for the final shot and walk out of here with a win. So a huge faceoff, probably the biggest faceoff of the game so far. That one's going to be loose. Looks like it's going to be won by the Jesuits, but again, like you said, Darian just has to get back in the offensive opportunity. As timeout's going to be taken by Fairfield Prep. And their fans going at static here from the stadium field. Yeah, now with 82 seconds to go, whole different ball game than it was just a minute and a half ago. Because now it's all knotted up, and Fairfield going to have, of course, have the ball out of the timeout. Let's see what they try to draw up here, how long they're going to hold for the shot. So tied at seven apiece. We'll be right back in the DF Media Network for the final minute and 20 seconds. So back here live on the DAF meeting that we're tied at seven apiece. I want to give a quick shout out to our DAF meeting crew coming out on this Saturday, bringing you all the sights and sounds in this one. Kenny Aranatagi, Joe Aranatagi, Jason Bellingham, Eric Bellingham doing a great job today as well. And of course, Thomas Erbar as well. Thomas, great to have you on the call today. But again, Darian seven, Fairfield Prep seven. And again, both of these teams, let's see what they can do. Two of the top teams in the United States battling it out here in Darien. And just like that, Fairfield Prep very quickly ties this game at seven. Yeah, and just a minute and 20 seconds, Fairfield Prep went from down two to now tied and with the ball. 
So Fairfield Prep, maybe maybe will try to just get a last second shot at it. But not for staring to get any offensive possessions. Shanahan quick over to Tim Shanahan. I wouldn't be surprised if Fairfield, if the opportunity presents itself before the clock starts to run out. I wouldn't be surprised if they just take it and try to score and then win the next face off. So again, Shanahan back out over near the 30. Over near the 25. Luke Shanahan passes this one back out. Fairfield Prep still looking for the dagger shot. Taking the wind up. Shanahan back out of Tim Shanahan. Once again, over near the 30. Prep moving this one along. 35 seconds left to go on the clock. So again, back now over to the 15. Tim Shanahan alone in the backfield behind the net of Hagen. So you're just on now for this final play. They're going to let it stall for a little bit. Haven't gotten a shot on just yet. Shanahan moving this one along, looking for a wraparound. So trying to get some shot on out in front. Can't do so as the final seconds will tick off. And we'll be going to overtime here from the stadium field. Yeah, it looks like Tim Shanahan got denied himself and just tried to shoot it across the goal to Luke Shanahan, but just going to go right past his stick. And that's how they're going to end regulation here. So it'll be the end of regulation. Overtime coming up on the DFME Network, and we'll be right back. So back here live in the DFME Network, overtime, four minutes on the clock, sudden death for both these teams. So the next goal will take victory. It's now four minute overtime, now we'll be on the clock, tied at seven, and Thomas getting face-offs have been hurting Darien, especially in the past four minutes of that fourth quarter. Added Fairfield Prep to get those couple of goals. Yeah, it definitely did, and now with sudden death, just whoever gets this first possession has a chance to end the game right here. So this face-off might be the biggest of the game so far. So again, face-off. That one's going to be won by Darian. Weird face-off attempt there. Looks like it was just kicked out. But Briggs McGuckin will get it for the Blue Wave. A huge spot. Yeah, Rubenstein nice play there. now with it. So Darian relaxing a little bit more now on the offensive side. Nice play there by Gavin Pearsall on the face-off. Kicking it out to McGuckin. And giving, giving his team the, the possession that could end the game here. Strategic attempt there by Darian McGuckin. Sends it over to Billado. Bilodo out in front, trying to wind up with it. it. Was Rupenstein, didn't get a shot on it. McGuckin now with it, over in front. Sends this one back over to Barnett, loose ball. Picked up by Darian, and that possession's gonna go to the Jesuit side. Yeah, nice check there from the Jesuits, just forced them out of bounds and forced a turnover, and now they're gonna have a chance to end this one themselves. So a turnover there by the Jesuits. They'll be on the offensive look now. Back out now over Fairfield Prep. 
They're going to look for it, bringing in a little substitution out in front. So again, back out over near the 40. Prep, still moving this one along quickly. Back out over near the 20. In Fairfield Prep all along over near the far side. Looking for that last shot. McGuckin heavy on the defense. Ball back out in front. Trying to get a shot on it was Jesuits. Now over to Luke Shanahan who had the equalizer goal in this one. Yeah, it looks like this prep team just trying to find that dangerous pass in towards the net. So still holding on prep. Trying to get some sort of shot on it. Minute and 50 left to go in OT. Back now over to Tim Shanahan behind the net of Hagen. Shanahan alone. Bonner on the heavy defense with the long stick. Looks like the prep attackman in midfield is just trying to rotate in and out of the middle. See if they can pull out these Darian defenders. Prep trying to get trying to get a strategic possession here. Don't want to waste any opportunities against a very strong Darian team. Back out over Prep. Still looking for that's gonna be the goal. Now it's gonna be it. And the Jesuits take victory from the stadium field. Luke Shanahan ending this one. The nice move, nice dodge towards the middle of the field and just wound up and put it right past. The spoon of Carter Hagen. So you take another look at that one. Luke Shanahan winds it up far. Misreads Connor Lane over in front. And a huge win for the Jesuits to start off the season. Yeah, it looks like just a nice little hesitation move there by Shanahan just before he took the shot. And that definitely opened up the shooting lane for, for him there. And what a huge win. What a huge way for them to open up their season coming in at rank 23 in the nation. Now just took down the number 10 team. And that's going to shoot them up the rankings. And... What a, what a way to start off their season and show what they're all about so here in 2024. Game, big game for both of these teams nonetheless, but a huge win for the Jesuits. And for the boys in blue, that's a tough one for the home opener. And the Jesuits do what Darian did to them last year, going into their place and getting the game-winning goal late. So again, Dar last time both these teams played at Darian, that one went to the Fairfield – Prep Jesuit side, so again, Prep will defeat Darien on their home turf in a huge Class L matchup. Of course, non-conference matchup, Fairfield Prep not in the FCAC, but again, nonetheless, for the USA Lacrosse rankings and just the season as a whole, that's a huge win for Fairfield Prep to have under their belt. Yeah, exactly, and even in the Class L rankings as well, going into the state playoffs, I know it's far away, away from here, but this, will, this game will definitely have an implication on that, and what a huge win there for the Jesuits. So again, Darien, they have a tough schedule ahead. I mean, their next game is against Brunswick, top five team in the country as well as Manhasset. I mean, they play all these tough teams. So again, loss like that for Darien might be hurting them down the road, especially when you have Brunswick lined up, who is a top five powerhouse in the country. Yeah, Darien definitely got to figure out what went wrong this game. Of course, they went up two a couple times in this game and just got to make the adjustments and learn from their mistakes today so they can, so they can go on and keep on winning against the tougher opponents. So a big win there for the Jesuits. Of course, we want to give a quick shout-out to our DAF media crew, bring you all the sights and sounds in this one. Kenny Aronatsky, Joseph Aronatsky, Eric Bellingham, Jason Bellingham, Thomas Erbar doing a great job along with our DAF media advisors, Damian Andrew and Bruce Ferguson. Bring you all the action today from this Saturday afternoon. Thomas Ponte, great to have you on the call today as always. I'm Liam thomas you been watching this game on the DAF media network, joint venture between the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend.